Hey there, welcome to Prog Monster. My name is Murph and I am the host of this show. A show dedicated to progressive rock, hard rock, heavy metal, and other forms of rock music. So here we are at our series, Rock Grades Who who Thrilled Us But Have Since Passed On. This is episode number 54 um, from 2016. This is actually going to be a two-parter. So this will be episode 54A. Then the next one will be 54B, of course. Uh, the reason that is, is there were so many people um, who passed this year that I couldn't narrow it down. I had it down to about eight, and then I decided that I should at least narrow it down to four. So I picked four at the bottom, and they were David Bowie, uh, Glenn Fry, Keith Emerson, and Greg Lake. So tonight we're going to do David Bowie and Glenn Fry, and then tomorrow we'll do um, the uh, Emerson Lake and Palmer Boys. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to start with David Bowie because he passed first. A um, couple things about David Bowie. Uh, I think he's one of the great, great glam rock artists of all time. Uh, very influential. Changed his whole style a few times, you know. More than, than any other single um, single rock star that I can think of, 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 of like a solo artist. Usually they don't change as, uh, so drastically, but he did a few times. He went from that, really that, kind of um, Ziggy Stardust thing to uh, this kind of Americanized thing and then to a, electronic stuff and then that led to dance stuff as well and um, just an extraordinary musician anyways we'll do his vitals first he was born January the 8th 1947 in London England he died January 10th um, 2016 at the age of 69 a few days after his birthday in New York City died of liver cancer actually um, his music type was art rock glam rock pop electronic and experimental instruments vocals now apparently he played guitar keyboards uh, saxophone and harmonica I don't do not recall seeing him do any of those things but if they say he did, maybe he did. I don't know. Um, years active uh, from 1962 to right up until his death in 2016. Okay, Bowie, um, of course, as you know, was very, um, very much an art rock type musician. Although he did do a small stint as the lead front man for Tin Machine, which was a heavy metal band. Kind of different. And, but that was later in his career, like I think 88 to 92 or something. Anyways, um, he had a lot of uh, fairly uh, well-known songs, I think. His, uh, his deep cuts were good too, but uh, he was one of those musicians whose deep cuts and songs that made the radio were fairly similar to each other. So... Um, you know, if you liked his, his the radio stuff, I'm sure you'd like the stuff on his album as well. I, I found it that way anyways from the albums I have. The stuff that got played on the radio like Let's Dance, China Girl, and um, and Cat People, which were on the Let's Dance album, and Modern Love as well, were pretty much the basics of the same of the other songs on the album, you know. Anyways, um... He was a, uh, he had a very distinct voice. I believe he had one of the most distinctive voices of anybody out there. Now, he wasn't born David Bowie. He was born Davy Jones. Of course, this created a bit of a conflict in the 1960s because of the monkeys. So he decided to change his name to David Bowie. Uh, not that he resembled Davy Jones at all, but... You know, there could have been some confusion there. So he decided to avoid the confusion and and uh, chose the name Bowie. Now, I did wear this orange to represent his hair and his flamboyance. Um, 
I've always liked the David Bowie. I've liked his stuff. I've been listening to Bowie since probably about 1980, in around that time period. Um, uh, I didn't really become a huge fan of his until uh, the Let's Dance album came out, which I didn't really like at first, except for China Girl, but it grew on me over time. And that's the that was the time that I went to see him live too, which was great. I loved the show. Uh, I liked him in the movie Cat People. I liked him in the um, in the the Fraggle Rock People's show. I can't think of what it's called right now. Uh, the Labyrinth. That's what I was think, trying to think of. I liked him in that. I liked I liked his whole persona. He had a very kind of different persona. Um, I've enjoyed the concerts I've seen him in, and much of his music, much of the the earlier stuff, quite a bit. I don't know as much of the later stuff, but I have heard a little bit, and it's not bad too. So, anyways, David Bowie was a great rock musician, and I wanted to. I picked him. He was the first one I was going to do. No matter, no matter who else I picked, he was definitely going to be one of them. Right. Um, I think he was the be uh, the number one choice for me tonight. So um, it's sad that he's gone um, because he was very active right up till almost the end. So the other uh, musician that we're doing tonight, uh, Glenn Fry. Um, Glenn Fry, very influential. Um, he started out performing in bands in the. Uh, in the mid 60s I think um, but before we get going on to that we'll just talk about his we'll give you his, his vitals he was born November 6 1948 in Detroit Michigan he died January the 18th 2016 at the age of 67 in New York City from complications resulting from intestinal um, intestinal surgery um, he was uh, rock, pop rock, soft rock, and country rock, pretty much. Uh, vocals, uh, he vocals, guitar, and keyboards, and he was active from 1966 to 19... Sorry. 2015. Yeah, sorry, it's a bit late. Anyways, um, Glenn Fry, he was active forming bands early on, and he got to know Bob Seger fairly early. He, early on when he was younger and um, actually appeared on some of Bob Seger's albums some of his bigger hits as well and then he was he and um, his friend Don Henley um, were asked to perform as the backing band for uh, Linda Ronstadt and it was here that they met um, Two other members of the Eagle, uh, Meisner and God, the guy's name <laughs> escapes me. Anyways, uh, and they eventually went on to form the Eagles, and the Eagles were one of the biggest selling album bands of all time, um, and were nominated into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame on their first ballot, 1998, and just had a periphery of number one hits and uh, big albums and uh, they broke up in 1980 which was kind of strange they weren't together all that long uh, relatively speaking compared to a lot of bands um, but had over 100 million albums sold they got back together in 94 releasing an album as well um, he was to me the basically I thought of him as the leader of the band Although him and Glenn, um, and sorry, him and uh, Don Henley did most of the writing for the band, but you know Joe Walsh, um, oh my God, I'm drawing a huge blank here. <laughs> Anyways, uh, they were the two main writers, Glenn Fry and him, um, Don Felder. That's who I was trying to think of. Don Felder and. Uh, Joe Walsh were also in that band with the Eagles. Uh, Timothy Smith. Um, yeah, there's a few others too. Um, but 
he was the main guy, I think, and pretty much um, uh, was the leader of the band, and they pretty much did what he wanted, even though there was a lot of ego involved in this band. But he was uh, he wrote some of the some of the best songs on the album and sang. Mo he was co-lead along with um, Don Henley, of course, and played. He played guitar and keyboards on the albums as well. I think he was a great musician. Um, uh, his voice was okay. I don't think his voice was the best of the Eagles. Probably Henley was the best. I like Joe Walsh's better as well. But he was definitely a main cog in that band. So, um, there you have it, the Eagles, um, or not the Eagles, uh, Glenn Fry of the Eagles, who, uh, you know, unfortunately passed, um, after having surgery, he had, uh, several types of complications that resulted in his death, and it's unfortunate he was only 67 years of age. Um, I'm pretty sure that if he had survived that and gotten better and come back on, that we would be still... The Eagles would still be touring together like they would have gotten uh, on tour again. As it is, with their leader gone, they, I don't think they've been doing too much. So that's the first night of this uh, two-parter. Uh, Glenn Fry, Don Henley. Tomorrow we'll be talking about those two-thirds of the uh, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. I'm a big fan of Greg Lake. And I like some of the stuff that uh, Palmer did. I wasn't so huge of a fan of Keith Emerson. Uh, other than the stuff from Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, I don't really know much other stuff that he's done. But we'll be talking about those two tomorrow, probably a little more in depth. Um, today was a little bit tough. But um, anyways, uh, so what I've done with the honorable mentions, because I haven't said anything about that yet, um, is I've split it in two. So we'll be doing up to a certain point uh half like about i think i got about eight here and then i'll do the rest tomorrow on the other one so robert still still stigwell from uh, was the manager of the bgs so he he passed uh, dale griffin of um mock la hoople jimmy bain yes jimmy bain of rainbow and dio paul Cantor of Jefferson Airplane and Starship. Uh, Signe Tilly, Tilly Anderson uh, was also from Jefferson Airplane. Maurice White of Earth, Wind & Fire. Lenny Barker of the Shanana. You know, he was the do-do-do-do-do. <laughs> and George Martin, of course, uh, producer for the Beatles. And we'll do the rest of the people for the second part of the episode when I do it which I believe will come out on Thursday morning. So this one will come out tomorrow morning. So anyways, we're getting close to the end of this thing. Um, I think we got maybe six or seven episodes left. I'm not sure I'd have to count them. Uh, we, got the one to, we got the one Thursday, so that'll be the second half of 2016. And then we have one for 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020. 2021 and 2022 so yeah seven more episodes it's been a long haul um i've i've probably changed it up a little bit uh i originally started just talking basically about the music and then some people were saying they want to know more about how they died and what their complications were there so i went through a period where i was doing that a lot i kind of gotten away from that and trying to just talk more about the individual and his music again and at the same time, I'm still mentioning what happened to them. Um, tomorrow's will be a little bit longer than that because of Emerson's uh, Emerson dying of suicide. So, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please like and subscribe. And uh, we will see you uh, on Thursday for the Series B.